In this week's Torah portion, which is a double Torah portion, Matot and Masse, we come to the end of the book of Numbers. And on the surface, if you look at these two Torah portions together, they seem to be filled with things that perhaps don't make perfect sense to us today, about how vows are held responsible by one person or another, and women, their vows are different than men, and so on and so forth. But it also shows us how Torah does, in fact, evolve, and every generation does, in fact, have the opportunity to make a new understanding of Torah. Last week, Rabbi Kohn talked about the daughters of Zalafachad, and the very end of this book of Numbers, at the end of the portion Maaseh, it returns to the daughters of Zalafachad, and as Moses is parceling out the land, he is reminded and tells the people that their request was just, and therefore they should inherit their father's land. Recently, we saw the Supreme Court of the United States of America change a position as well on something that was long held, which was that homosexual marriage was against the law. And in fact, if you go back 20 years in the reform responsa, there is perhaps ambivalence about the role of the rabbi in the synagogue in same-sex marriage. There was a divided decision on a responsa 20 years ago where some rabbis said it was okay for other rabbis to perform these marriages, and some said that they could not. But as Torah ev evolves in every generation, only two years ago, there was another responsa that says that, yes, homosexual marriage is kiddushin, the same way heterosexual marriage is, and therefore rabbis and synagogues should celebrate with couples as they formalize their love together. And so, just as we see in the Torah portion that the Torah evolves and comments on itself and changes when necessary, so too we as Reformed Jews should we always be looking to find ways to make Judaism come alive in the world in which we live.